Hi, it's uh, the second part of our talk uh, with Dimitris uh, from Athens. I uh, uh, will not try and pronounce his surname, sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm even less optimistic than Stepan is. Uh, uh, last time we, uh, we talked about your, uh, how, uh, about your career, about what uh, Bookbinder's life in Greece is like. And now we would really like to see your work. Uh, so, uh, hi, hi again. Uh, 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 which book will we start with? Hi, everyone. Um, I think we'll start with uh, the oldest one, which is the oldest of the bunch, at least, that I'm going to be showing to you. It's uh, my binding for Titus Andronicus by Shakespeare, the play of Shakespeare. Um, which is one of the few actually personal projects on my blog. And it's, it's this binding here. Let me, let me see if I can get this into focus. Yeah. So it's this binding here, which is a full French leather binding. Uh, it's also, I don't know if that's visible on the camera. It's also mottled. It's actually mm -hmm. dark gray with black spots on it. Yeah. And it's gilt in, in 22 karat gold, if I remember correctly. Now, um, and as you can see, the, the design is composed of Roman funerary masks, uh, which they molded off the face of the deceased. And it has a lot to do, of course, with the play, which, spoiler, has a lot of deaths in it. Uh, it's Shakespeare, of course. Sorry to interrupt. I should add that uh, in the modern days, it also reminds of the Game of Thrones. Somehow. Yeah, kind of, kind of. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, the, the interesting thing with this, with this binding um, is not the binding per se, but the story behind it, uh, which uh, is uh, a story of obsession, you could say. I, I wanted to take part in the designer's bookbinders competition. And this was the book I chose. And my, the design I wanted to do was initially very different. And I was, I was really excited you know, to make that and take part. And I did a lot of preparation. I did a lot of tests uh, during uh, the span of a year. And, and everything was great. But when I actually went ahead to make the binding for the competition, everything went wrong. Everything was a disaster. I, I could not wrap my hand around it. And so I took it apart and I made it anew. And the same thing happened and this happened two or three times. I, I, was, I was frustrated beyond words. And at the end I had to make something. So I came up with what you saw with, with this and I, I, I didn't feel it. And in the end, although it was ready in time, I didn't send it. I, I decided against sending it. And this whole, uh, this whole thing taught me a lot. Uh, don't know if you've ever, if you've ever heard of the sunk cost fallacy, uh, where you've invested too much in something to back out and it became a fixation and it cost me a lot it, i was uh, i was in complete burnout by the end and it was a very valuable lesson since then i've learned to to decline it, it has been easier to decline when i see that a project doesn't fit me or it will cost me more than it's worth. And 
I've also I've also learned to abandon projects that are at least personal projects that are not going somewhere. And that's that's not an easy thing to do. At least it wasn't for me because I'm a perfectionist. I want to get, you know, to to get through, to get it done, to get it done in the way I imagine it should be done. And learning to say, OK, this doesn't work, I have to. I have to stop, I have to abandon it and move on to the next thing was, um, was valuable for me. So even if I didn't send the binding, in the end, I got something important from it. When you say that it, yeah. cost, it cost you a lot, you mean the book itself too. Uh, from what I remember, what I read uh, on your blog, uh, the book itself is an, uh, is an expensive and an impressive tome. It's a Ballantine book, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's it's, uh, it's amazing, really. It's it's a very mm. very beautiful. I don't know if I can get you to see. Here is title, and uh, you should you should see the paper. I mean, it's it's amazing. <laughs> uh, it is, it it, is amazing. It's uh, what is it? Early twentieth century, right? Uh, let me see. I think it is. I think it is. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. the The real cost was not was not the book cost, which was expensive, of course. Uh, the real cost was. Um, something that you cannot get back you know your your energy your time and the stress that you go through and you you can't put a price on that it's it's always too expensive it's always the cost is always a lot you can never you can never have uh, too little stress as much as you can avoid it as much as you can have peace of mind you should you should try to do that. Uh, have the wounds healed? Do you like it now? Uh, um, hmm. I think I appreciate it much more than I did back then. Back back then I hated it. I I even made an ugly box and kept it in there for two years. I I never looked at it during those years. Um, but you know, there's there's so much of me in that that I I can't ignore it. I it's uh, it's one of my children. Uh, you know, I have to accept it. Yeah, I guess I guess every artisan has to have uh, a project like that. Uh, well, it's better not to have it than to 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 get this understanding that uh, some things are better uh, some some things are better not to be done and uh, some sometimes time is better to be saved and money and all that stuff and emotions uh, but we are all our people and uh, it's it's uh, we usually learn on, on our own mistakes and uh, i also had a project like that i had a uh, uh, repair pro project uh, on um, Hundred-year-old, very expensive book, and I, sp I it, 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 it was supposed to be a simple rebacking project, and uh, I, in the end, I said spent something like hundred on hundred twenty hours on uh, uh, restoring the book, and I hated it, and uh, I didn't charge the customer in the end because uh, the original price we agreed on was too low, and I wasn't ready to, you know, to sell my work for for such a petty money. And I wasn't ready to negotiate a new price. And uh, yeah, I was angry with myself. I was angry with the customer. I was angry with the book. And uh, it was an important experience, uh, but uh, a really hard one. Mm. It's true. It's true. You know, the the more you get um, the more you get knocked around by by difficulties and projects that test you. Uh, the better it is down along the way, and I'm I'm fairly glad that, uh, somewhat glad at least that 
I had this experience early on um, because, because it was very different. It was, you know, kind of a singularity. Things were different. It was, there's a pre-Titus Andronicus era and an after Titus Andronicus era. Uh, have you ever entered another competition or was it? Oh, yeah. Well, I did. And uh, the result was the same, although for a completely different reason. I, I think there was a competition a few years ago that had to do with, with myths and heroes, uh, again, by designers, bookbinders. And I had a copy, a folio society copy of Arabian Nights and um, I had uh, some some very interesting things in mind for that one but um, two things happened and in the end I I didn't take part I didn't send the book although I had paid for the for the entry fee uh, the one thing was that I was preparing the leather and uh, which I had, uh, I had done a lot of work on it. And when I was pairing it, I did the awful thing and paired through the leather at the head cup. And you can't fix that. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's totally wasted. Um, there was no repairing that. So I didn't have enough time to get a different leather, you know, a proper leather. There wasn't enough time to order one, to get one and to work on it. And also some, some different things happened uh, regarding work, something urgent, I don't recall exactly what. So I had to, I had to move on. However, it was, I was frustrated, but it was much easier to do so after after Titus Andronicus. I just accepted that, you know, competitions are not for me. Uh, what what can I now? say? <laughs> yeah, yeah, this happens. Uh, so should we, should we proceed with the, another one? Yeah, sure. The, okay, let's go with a very recent one which is this. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can see the, the colors, which is an electric blue and, and fuchsia. No, there is some, some, there's something like yeah, pink and, or ruby. And, and even yeah. purple. Yeah, on exactly. Some, on some uh, of yeah, the purple. rooms, yeah. Mm. yeah. So, it's it's this thing here. So let me open it for you. And kind of like this. Mm -hmm. And here's a look on the interior. Whoa, this is okay. spectacular. Yeah, yeah, it's an amazing paper. Is it is it hard to work with this with this paper or no no not at all troubles. So, as uh, as Stepan mentioned earlier, I've made all the brass parts and ornaments myself, and this this is a very a very me project. It has many of the things I I like I enjoy on it. Um, it has to do with, you know, fantasy. It has to do with uh, coming up with puzzles. Uh, it has to do with um, with metalworking, storytelling, uh, problem solving. At least, you know, when it comes to how can I achieve this result? How can I make something work? Uh, and it's it's something I've been wanting to do for for many many years, and it it really it really shows the direction I would like to be 
you know, moving towards. I would like to be able to, to do more projects like this in the future because it allows me to explore pretty much everything I like in book binding. Um, it has also an interesting feature. You might be able to show it in photos as well, but I'll try to, to demonstrate it for you here. The, the studs on the corners have hidden gemstones in them. <laughs> wow, that's nice. Which you can, which you, which you're supposed to, you know, to discover that they're there and then, and then use, use them, place them in the sockets in the central star. And supposedly it reveals something. That's, that's one of the aspects of this project. I really like that it's, it's a binding that, that allows you to explore it, to play with it. And it has, it has secrets. It has a story to tell. And that story uh, can, be, can be many things. It can be anything the person using it wants. So I, I think this, you know, this opens very, very interesting paths to, to explore. It's something I'm, I'm really looking for. Um, could you tell us a bit more about the book itself? It's covered in runes, but those are not Nordic runes, right? No, no, uh, they are. They they are actually a modified version of Futhark, um, and I've made some some small custom tools in order to be able to you know to tool them. Um, and they they if you if you translate them you don't get a readable text you get uh, gibberish and you have to find out how to how to to make a sense of it as well it's it's kind of a a riddle a puzzle so there are there are several layers and you have to go through all of them to finally discover uh, that there are gemstones and what you must do with them. And I, I wanted, you know, for this to be, to be intriguing. Uh, I think people interested in, uh, in fantasy and tabletop games will, you know, will get, will get what I'm going for here. Uh, yeah, definitely. Because uh, its purpose is to be to take you somewhere else, you know, to hold this binding, to explore this binding, and feel that you are in a different world, that you are holding um, a magical artifact, even if it doesn't have the properties like we talked <laughs> before. So. That's it. I I was actually inspired for the design by Astrolabs, which is um, mm -hmm. a, a tool you could say uh, sailors use to orient themselves oh, based okay. on the location of stars. Yeah. Um, it's been it's been quite a complex and intricate project, but I think I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And, and that's a rare thing. I'm, I'm rarely happy with how something has turned out. <laughs> well, I, I, I would definitely like to see your next experiment uh, in, the, in this area. <laughs> um, I, I really like the result too. Have you ever heard of uh, Codex Serpinianus? Luigi yeah, Serpinian yeah, sure. Book. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> It's somewhere in, the, in that kind of uh, direction. An uh, encyclopedia of a made up world. Who doesn't like that? Mm, exactly, exactly. You know, um, there's, there's some mystery in it involved. And you feel 
uh, you feel with such, you know, with such um, uh, obscure or strange books that there is something we still don't know, you know, something the, the author, the creator had discovered and it remains a secret. And that's, that's something very, very exciting. It, um, it's no wonder people have been trying to decipher such books for you know for centuries and i think i think it would be disappointing if they actually in a sense if they actually manage to decipher it you know the mystery would be gone oh every time i hear that somebody cracked the voynich manuscript i think to myself oh no <laughs> No, don't do that. <laughs> Why would you spoil it for everyone? I mean, <laughs> keep it to yourself. Could you talk about your Hamlet book a bit more? Uh, uh, so we're we're now moving moving to the books that Dimitris doesn't have in his place right now. So we will we will show some uh, photos of them, and uh, we will also look at the photos on our laptops. Uh, just to be in context. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you've already mentioned uh, earlier about how you uh, composed the design out of letters. Uh, could you uh, uh, walk us through the process? How did that work? How do you do it exactly? Uh, you mean composing the design with letters? Yeah, and no, and translating it into the finished uh, product. Uh, uh, do you to uh, to it? Was it uh, all prearranged? Did you first design it out of letters and then repeated it precisely, or was it more of a, a freestyle? I mean, did you come up with it as you went? Well, I I cre I created an outline of the. Uh, of the rough shape and I try to to fill it with letters uh, in a way that will you know make sense visually uh, as a final result um, it was it was strange because I I don't feel comfortable with just just going with the flow I I need to have some preparation some sort of um, guidelines to what I'm doing. And so I had to be very intuitive while creating this design. And it was it was something it was something challenging for me. But in the end it came out well. You know, it's uh, the the letters did their thing and it looked uh, it looked pretty much as I expected it to. Uh, basically what I did was create a rough outline of the, of the crown and start uh, ink stamping on tracing paper, each letter of the alphabet, uh, using it in various places. And gradually the design, you know, filled up uh, became complete. Yeah, the, the, because that's another thing that I noticed. Uh, there's neither too much of space between letters, nor too little. Mm. It's, you, you, clear, you clearly went on until it just felt right. Exactly. Uh, so it, it, it didn't feel crowded, but it also didn't feel, uh, I don't know, too prearranged. I mean, it 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 it, fe it feels mm. rather uh, free, uh, free. So the pro uh, the process clearly worked. That was uh, that was the intention. I wanted something that would look at the same time chaotic and orderly, because that's what you get with, you know, when you go to uh, when you deal with power. Power is a contained chaos. It's it can it can have unexpected um, outcomes through its actions. Uh, a lot of people struggle for it. It uh, has side effects. Its its very existence has side effects that uh, we never really comprehend in their entirety. So I needed something that would um, relay 
the nature of power. And that's also the reason I, I gold tooled the design in, in genuine gold because power is valuable and um, the crown crowns themselves are valuable as an object but their their true value lies in the power they grant their owner and gold is um, is a great material of course for that but um, there's also there's also more to it because and and that's why that's what i i try to do with designs at least when inspiration allows it or uh, the client's budget or request um, are not are not an obstacle i i like the designs i do ideally to have a lot of symbolism in them to have uh, interconnected and overlapping layers of meaning so that you can interpret a decorative element or you know part of a design in in many ways uh, for for example the letters on the crown also represent shakespeare's writing which uh, as time has proven is is a peak in in writing in language and so uh, there there are a lot of there's a lot of meaning in that crown and in in many different it has many different facets well that that's where a good education helps quite a lot <laughs> i guess